It was so very, very sad. It brings tears to your eyes. One evening, it was a Friday night, five youngsters were crossing the road and they were in a crosswalk. They pushed the button, it had flashing yellow lights. A hit and run driver went right through and unfortunately we lost three of the children. Anytime somebody gets killed on the road, it breaks our hearts, but when it's a child, it really cuts you to the core. The traffic commander and I, we started talking about how we need to get red lights. Red means stop, yellow does not. Sometimes crossing the street is okay. We do it here at the corner where people are expecting us. There's a stoplight, we can push the button, cars crossing our path have to stop. And people turning have to slow down to complete the turn. But when you're on foot, these stoplight crosswalks can be far apart. These suburban blocks can be huge, which means a long walk down to the nearest traffic light. That's exhausting on foot. So of course, people are gonna jaywalk. And I can't say I blame them. To try and make this safer, engineers will paint a crosswalk. See how it works. These aggressive looking signs on Speedway Boulevard in Tucson nope. don't seem to work. I actually had to pull my foot back. Simply painting lines <laughs> and putting up signs nope. is not enough. Nope. <laughs> Motorcyclists, you gonna stop for me? Nope. <laughs> but once there's nobody coming, this is worse than I expected. I got stuck. This is serious. I, I thought maybe I'd have to wait three or four cars. I forgot my hat. Maybe that was the problem. Hello, orange vest here. And I'm a six foot tall adult man. Not everybody who crosses the street is. Pedro Rodriguez makes a very astute comment on the previous video. One of the ways you can know a crosswalk is truly safe is would you let your 10 year old kid make that crossing unescorted? I don't have a 10 year old yet. So, I'm gonna have to rely <coughs> on somebody else. Who's daddy's little pride and joy? You are. May I introduce my baby? I haven't had a full night's sleep since this little guy came home. Well, this is nowhere near 60 frames per second. I'm gonna push my baby across this mid-block crosswalk. You know, you're three and a half times more likely to get hit by a car crossing at a painted crosswalk without any help than if you just jaywalked. Okay, bless, don't hit my baby. Hey, stop for my baby. You're gonna hurt my baby. A bad crosswalk arms you with only paint. Ah! Paint doesn't change. You almost hit my baby. It might be worse than nothing at all. Man. Back in college, I lived here, and there used to be a crosswalk right there. No traffic light, it didn't have buttons pedestrians could push. There was really no way for drivers to be able to tell somebody was there and wanted to stop, except if you were really paying attention. At one January evening rush hour, three travel lanes stopped for a pedestrian, but a driver in the fourth lane didn't see her. And it happened right there. I came home to a whole bunch of police lights. Asked my roommate what's going on, and he said, oh, you're not going to like hearing this story. The state removed the crosswalk. Put up fences to keep people from crossing and made people go all the way down to the light. And a decade later, there's definitely plenty of jaywalking. But thankfully, nobody else has been killed here since. These plain crosswalks could have disappeared a long time ago, but we blame the wrong thing. This 1972 study said it's not the crosswalk's fault, it's those careless pedestrians. They just don't seem to care. The study provided no evidence to back up this claim. Today is very different. Engineers try to draw as much attention as they can to crosswalks or draw attention to the pedestrian themselves. Cities install a container of flags on each side of the street and you help yourself. And you hold out a big orange flag which makes it easier for drivers to see you and theoretically stop for you. One of the problems with flags I'm wondering about is what if the number of pedestrians crossing the street is really imbalanced, you know, people walking to work in the morning, and you eventually end up with just one flag left or in this case, no flags left. They all end up on the other side of the street. Well, then what's a pedestrian supposed to do? These are moderately effective, especially on smaller, quieter streets, but a Utah-based study found only 10% of pedestrians even use the flags. A second tool engineers try, a flashing yellow light. Research shows the ones that are blinking all the time, whether a pedestrian is there or not, are totally useless. 
Some of that's our own fault. We use blinking lights for everything. School zones and sharp curves in the road. And runaway ahead. truck Watch ramp. Fire trucks. Don't mess with Texas. They really are the road sign, boy who cried wolf. They work okay if they stay dark until a pedestrian pushes the button to activate the flasher. Some of these see a success rate of about 91%. But on wider, faster streets like this one, that can drop to as low as 13%. Perhaps these would be an improvement. Well, if we get hit, at least they won't have to drag us very far. The Federal Highway Administration is letting cities and states play with rapid flashing beacons. Ones that really get a driver's attention. I am impressed. That actually worked. Just off camera, the traffic is stopping. This feels a lot nicer than having to fend for myself. If you're going 25 miles an hour and you see a baby in a stroller, you're probably going to stop or slow down at least. But if you're going 45 miles an hour, you don't even see the baby in a stroller. With potentially devastating consequences. Thankfully, the cyclist here is okay. At least physically. Crashes are going down, but our fatalities are going up. Somewhere around 40% of them are pedestrian fatalities. And the majority of those have to do with people crossing mid-block at night. Part of Blake Olofsson's job, funnel pedestrians into safe places to cross. In a perfect world, every mid-block crosswalk would have a stoplight. Yellow lights tell drivers to speed up. It's not what we should do, but it's what we end up doing. But a red light tells people to stop. And they actually do. People respect the red light more. But these cost too much money to go in everywhere. They aren't allowed to go in everywhere. We'll get to that in a minute. Which is too bad because Tucson has more than its fair share of giant streets. Like Phoenix 30 years ago, the city doesn't have a network of freeways. Even Omaha has a bigger system. But everybody knows Omaha is basically the LA of the Great Plains. Three minutes of commercials, that's enough. It's Nelly. Sweet 98. Playing Tucson's country favorite. Without freeways, Tucson roads have to work twice as hard. We have a grid system, which, you know, we're thankful that we have that because we rely heavily on our arterials to basically take the place of a freeway. Through traffic is no longer elevated on bridges. Every car is going through stoplights, which must work smoothly, or else the entire city melts down at a gridlock. A quarter mile signal spacing is desirable. We're trying to get you to hit a green each time. And as you progress down the, the roadway segment, pedestrians mess up that green band because they come at random intervals. Which throws off their groove, and the clump of traffic can create the afternoon jam. You start to feel guilty for pushing the button to cross because I'm making so many people have to stop and wait for me. Not, not a problem. I did the waiting. The computer holding up the solitary pedestrian generates less total delay than making all these other drivers have to sit and wait for my 30-second red light. Poor me. Hold those folks for just a little bit longer to get those vehicles through. Combine that with engineering warrants, which are the minimum number of cars, pedestrians, or crashes to justify installing a stoplight. To warrant a pedestrian-only signal, there need to be over 200 pedestrians crossing in one hour, or 100 people per hour over four hours. Perhaps unnecessarily strict, but that's what the rules are at the moment. Which means most mid-block crosswalks are left behind. The ones that rarely see pedestrians are the ones that drivers are paying least attention to. A deadly catch-22. And this was unacceptable for Tucson's former transportation administrator, Richard Nassi. Where do you want your children to cross the road? Well, you want to make sure there's a really good chance that all the drivers are stopping. After a hit-and-run driver killed several children in one accident, Dr. Nassi was determined to do something about it. The traffic commander and I, we started talking about how we need to get red lights showing on these locations. Red means stop. Yellow does not. It's the Pelican Crossing. My wife and I were there in Bristol, and I saw a signaling unit. And it's your turn. A red light stops all the cars, but then it flashes yellow, which is more like a stop sign. Amber two, this is what you've got to do. That lets drivers go when it's clear, rather than waiting 30 seconds. If pedestrians are out of the way, no more wasting time. This is exactly what the United States had been looking for. Learn how to use the Pelican Crossing. The very first hawk was designed on the back of a pub napkin. His wife, 
came up with the name, he eagerly returned to Arizona and told his colleagues. We made the first talk out of parts and pieces. So we went to the backyard, the electronic technicians cobbled together one of the early Fox signals, and it worked like a champ. There's new equipment here now, but this was the site of the very first Hawk Beacon. People drive like crazy on this road because it's one of the major east-west routes across town. 20 years ago at this corner, San Fernando... Because of people like him, now imagine you have to cross this nightmare of a seven-lane boulevard. On a busy street like this, this is really comforting. There are buttons on each side of the street. The flashing yellow warns drivers. Well, see how long I have to wait. The yellow turns Three solid, seconds. just like a stoplight, before it turns solid double red. Oh, wow. Two red light runners. People run in the red but light. everybody else is good at stopping. It's actually pretty fast. As the pedestrian, my time to shine. But once I get the blinking countdown hand, the hawk signal does this. Call the wigwag. Cars can treat this like a stop sign. I'm out of the way of the eastbound lanes, so traffic that way can resume now. Kids caught on right away. They love to press the buttons. They love to make the red lights come on. And drivers seem to be stopping every time. We'd asked permission from the Federal Highway Administration to experiment. They said yes. Two bright red lights over the road. They caught on pretty quick. But unlike other treatments, these work everywhere. And it doesn't matter where the Hawk is installed, if it's a 50 or 55 mile an hour street, if it's a six lane divided highway, you always get 97, 98, 99% compliance of the drivers. That's equal to a normal stoplight but without the hassles that come with one. The Hawk activations uh, between signals do not interrupt progression uh, significantly. All thanks to that wigwag. Less delay for drivers, which means the warrants to install a Hawk beacon are much easier to meet, which really opens the door on that missing middle between traffic signals and unsignalized crosswalks. And something else hot. In the middle of summer, it can be 114 here. Have the pedestrian out here cooking on the corner waiting for a synchronized operation doesn't work. The city of Tucson I thought was very wise and they followed the federal highway guidance. All these are now run on hot buttons. One, two, three. That's what he's talking about when he says a hot button. That's pretty fast. The greatest uh, wait here is just a few seconds to maybe as high as 20, 22 seconds. Obviously, this is like magic for pedestrians, but it's also good for the drivers as well. Imagine that you're a, you're a pedestrian and you hit the button and you have to wait for 90 seconds, and yet you see a gap like we have here. There's a giant gap in traffic. Well, maybe I'll just go ahead and go. Well, then they're gone, they're long gone by the time the amber lights start flashing and everybody's brought to a halt. Well, now maybe there are cars and they're looking around and saying, why is this dumb light? on right now. There's nobody here. What's the point of this? And so they start disregarding it in the future, thinking, oh, those things just go off for no reason. So now the pedestrians have less compliance and the, and the uh, drivers have less compliance. In my role here, I answer a lot of, um, we don't call them complaints, we call them requests. And we got one from a person that said, hey, wait a second. This I, I noticed that the pedestrian pushes the button and the signal comes right on. Why can't I have that for my car? <laughs> a few lessons. When the Hawk is too close to a side street with a stop sign, sometimes a driver will pull out thinking the red light is to help them out rather than the pedestrian. Don't put a Hawk too close to a vehicle intersection. Give it a few hundred feet and a sign to gently remind that this is indeed an actual bona fide red light, the kind they need to stop for. Normally, this is the part of the video where I'd point out all the problems and trade-offs. Transportation always has trade-offs. This saves pedestrians from being sacrificed in the name of cars, but it doesn't sacrifice cars in the name of pedestrians either. Sitting or standing, everybody can like this. Really, the only skeptics were some other engineers. In most states, if the signal is out, then drivers are supposed to stop. Well, that's why this is called a beacon, and uh, when engineers use that argument, you've just taken a lot of pictures of traffic here, the beacon is out, and you don't see drivers stopping. Researchers all over the country visited Tucson to see how well Hawk beacons work in the real world, and the results were good. 29% reduction in all types of accidents, and about a 15 or 16% reduction in serious 
uh, types of crashes. Due in part to drivers actually stopping. Basically, if it's a red signal, you get high compliance. With the RFB or other signals that are just yellow, um, even though technically cars are supposed to yield in this state to the pedestrian crossing the street, it's harder for the for the law enforcement agencies to justify being able to give out a ticket for the lack of yielding, etc. A red light, they say, easy. After 10 years of study, the Federal Highway Administration approved the pedestrian hybrid beacon, the official name for a hawk beacon. I'd wondered if Dr. Nassi got some type of royalty for his invention, but that's not how federal approval works. I reached out on background to an academic expert who tells me Dr. Nassi purposely used as many off-the-shelf components as he could so nobody could patent this. So now they're popping up all over the country. Now the problem is everybody wants one. We get a lot of requests for hawks. People call up and say, I want to hawk it you know, in front of my house or, you know, I go to the park. The city already has 140 hawks, which they plan to double as money rolls in. And we rank them based on the criteria for the device itself. For example, the speed limit, the traffic volume, the distance from a school. And try to use data as a crystal ball to guess not just where pedestrians are, but where they want to be. That analogy, well, it's a freeway. No one's crossing a freeway, but then you build a bridge over it. Then there's like 100 people crossing. So Speedway in Beverly with a white marking, you know, you might not be really inclined to cross there, but once we install the Hawk and there is going to be a Hawk there eventually, people are going to maybe start using the crossing and you know explore the other side of their neighborhood. And it's not just the number of potential people, but who they are. U.S. Census data. So we include no access to car, disabled, low income. Um, so we're really throwing some equity components into the ranking. Because whether on four wheels, two wheels, or two feet... It's all about people. Traffic engineering is like, it's engineering, but it's also psychology. If you're going to have big roads like this and, and large gaps for pedestrians that they have to cross, let's get them across safely and effectively.